All right, let's plate some Chell here. Here we go, Hawks for Sabres. Yeah, Patrick Kane. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we got Jack Eichel there. Uh, yeah, we're gonna play on Superstar. Come on, come on. You gotta play on Superstar. That's that's what you gotta do. If you're gonna be real at this game. We're gonna make it to the top. Let's uh, let's make sure our lines are correct here. We got um. Yeah, yeah, all right, okay, yeah. You know what? I'm not really liking this top line. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's good enough. I think we're gonna we're gonna drop we're gonna drop Kane down uh, to the third line. Let's put Hayden on the top. That looks that looks good. Let's uh, let's go. Let's roll here. Suck it, blue. I don't wanna overreact. <laughs> this is gonna be a good year. Not too shabby. The best game ever. Hello and welcome to Hawks Recap. Game 67 has just concluded. And this is the Blackhawks tie the Sabres 4-4. Then they go into overtime where they tie again. And then the Blackhawks win in the shootout with the score technically finishing up as 5-4. Now the lines for the Blackhawks, as I alluded to in the intro, uh, they were weird coming into this game. But... As we should be well aware of by now, especially through Coach Q's tenure, uh, line combinations at the start of a game don't really mean a whole lot. They get changed so much during the course of a game that they're not really rules, they're more of guidelines. The majority of the first period was pretty sloppy for the Hawks. Uh, Sabres gave them all the chances in the world early on. Hawks had two power plays, did absolutely nothing with either of them. It looked atrocious, honestly. Uh, there were a lot of shots, though, in this period. Hawks out shooting the Sabres 16-14. So 30 shots total. It's a decent amount for a period, for sure. But it was still not really that great of a period. The Blackhawks did score twice, though, despite the overall ugliness of the period. Both goals coming after the 16-minute mark, so with less than four minutes to play in the period. Duncan Keith starts it off with just uh, picking up a rebound and just backhanding it home past Hutton, who had his own stick kind of caught up in a defender and just couldn't do anything. Uh, that's pretty much why the puck went in. So... Keith gets the Hawks on the board first, and then with a little under two minutes left to play, a beautiful play of Kane gets it over to Cahoon in the neutral zone, who then just one touch passes it to Anisimov, who's just streaking down the middle, all alone, breakaway, and he just makes Hutton look foolish, and he makes it 2 nothing Hawks going into the second period. So the Hawks ended up getting a couple goals in a period that they didn't really play all that well in. So that actually gives you a lot of confidence. You're like, okay, let's just pick up our play and things will only get better. It didn't really happen. The second period was rough. That's when our atrocious defense pretty much reared its head. Saboka would score three minutes into the second period, and then Montour would score four and a half minutes in to tie this game at two. And then the Blackhawks go on the power play, where they, once again, do absolutely nothing. And not only that, they give up a shorthanded goal. So the Buffalo Sabres, not even halfway through the second period, are now up three to two. The box score will show that the Hawks' power play went 0 for 5 in this game, but that would be incorrect. They essentially went negative 1 for 5, which means that the Hawks' power play in this game was so atrocious that it basically broke mathematics. So the Hawks are down a goal going into the third period, but they would find a way to tie it up not even 5 minutes in. Anisimov would pounce on a turnover from the Sabres in their defensive zone. He would snipe it by Hutton, but it would hit the crossbar, then hit Hutton in the back leg or skate area. Uh, but like all good hockey players do, he follows up his shot and pokes home the rebound, and we're all tied up at three. But a couple minutes after that, there's a little breakdown in the neutral zone defensively by the Hawks, which sparks a rush from the Sabres, and Kyle Opozo would finish it off and put the Sabres on top 4-3, to three, and the Sabres are on track now, looking like they may just get their first win in Chicago, first win in the United Center since 2007, which, if you remember correctly your history, 
That was before Patrick Kane was drafted. Yeah, it's been a while. But no worries, 37 seconds later, Blackhawks with a strong shift. Offensive zone, puck bouncing around, finds Perlini in the slot area, and he would tie the game up with a nice little turnaround jumper. Perlini with his third goal in three games. I don't want to pretend that all of a sudden he's great now, but he's kind of got the hot hand right now. It's, it's nice to see him kind of scoring as of late. So this third period would go on to end with the score tied at four apiece, which means we get some bonus hockey, some overtime three-on-three -three action, exciting as always. And of course, this was a pretty exciting overtime, both teams getting many chances, kind of back and forth the entire time. Uh, but the overtime period would go through its five minutes. Nobody could score. And so we go to a shootout. And that is where the Hawks would score all three times. Kane, Taze, and Brinkett, and the Sabres would only get one goal from their captain, Eichel, which means the Blackhawks pick up the two points. Now, I'm going to say something here, and it's really not a secret. It shouldn't be. I feel like I've made it known before, uh, but I'm going to reiterate it. Uh, I am one of those people who like the shootout. I enjoy it, and... I actually would rather have it stay than be taken away and have three-on-three -three overtime extended. I know it sounds weird, and you may not agree, and that's fine, but hear me out. The overtime in this game was exciting. And I'm not saying I don't like the overtime. I do. I really do enjoy the three-on-three -three overtime. It's fun. It's back-and-forth action. It's something that was a great change by the NHL. But in this game, the overtime went the distance. It went all five minutes. And you could tell by the end of the five minutes that both teams were just, just dogging. They were tired. They were dead tired. Because here's the thing. With overtime, or three on three overtime, with all the space and everything, uh, it's not like the whole team plays. It's just the top players. So with them having already played a lot of minutes, now you're asking your top players to play even more, you know, in the overtime period with more space, more skating and everything. Like, that's a lot to ask, especially over the course of a season. I mean, there's a reason why we dropped Kane down to the third line in this game. We don't want him to play 25 minutes a night anymore, especially where the, where the Hawks are in the standings right now. So that's why, for me... I'd rather not have the three on three overtime period be extended to like 10 minutes. Would there be a goal in the 10 minutes if you extend it? Uh, probably. There'd probably be some fluke goal, something. Uh, it would be kind of, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like, I, I don't think it would be the cleanest goal or anything. It, it would be probably a fluke goal or, or just something that's just like, ah, uh, they, they just look like tired when they score it. Um, so that, for me, is why I still like to have the shoot. I, I feel like five minutes is enough for three-on-three -three overtime, especially over the course of a season. So there is a reason, a good reason, for us to still have a shootout. And for real, as a Blackhawks fan, of a fan of a team that has a player in Patrick Kane who is arguably the best stick handler in NHL history, like, how can you not be for a shootout? How can you not want to see him and his creativity and his stick handling and his moves in a shootout? We have so many instances in the, in the past, his past shootouts, in his 101 shootout attempts that we've seen of him. Like so many awesome, great looking highlight real goals. Like how can we not want to see that? Now, some of you may disagree, and that is completely fine. We all have our different opinions. I'm not saying that I want more shootouts. All I'm saying is that I feel like the shootout just gets unfairly treated and crapped on, and it really doesn't get the love it deserves because it still has a valid purpose in this game, in this league, in the regular season. That's all I'm saying. I don't want it to go away because I still feel like we get really good benefit out of it. Is it perfect? No. No system really is. Not even 3 on 3 OT. There's no guarantee teams will score in 10 minutes. 
So what do you do? Go to 20 minutes? <laughs> With back-to-back -back games? Come on now. Come on. Top players playing all the time? they get worn down pretty quickly. So with that, I say thank you so much for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that as always, but most importantly, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time.